Well, welcome to our uh, webinar today. Uh, I'm Phil Wade. I'm the uh, Managing Director of Datgel. So uh, today we'll be uh, talking about the Datgel and Gint software solution. So just briefly about me, uh, I, I am a geotechnical engineer, like many of you. I, I've been using Gint since uh, well, last century. I can say that just. Um, for most of my career, I've uh, been involved in this type of work, geotechnical data management. But at the beginning, I, I did work as a geotechnical consultant doing uh, mostly SI, a bit of design. Um, I have uh, contributed quite a bit to um, data interchange formats, particularly AGS format. There's a few uh, things listed there. And I am the, um, the main person responsible for managing the products built by Datio. So, more to our real topic. Um, so today, this is a 45 minute overview, right? We're not gonna be doing a demo. Uh, we won't be getting into great details of each product um, because, well, because that would take too long, but I will also be doing follow-up uh, webinars over the next uh, three months, covering each of the Datgel products in detail, perhaps some of the, the Gint products as well. We'll have to decide on that. So today, uh, I will be introducing the, the parts of the solution, the Gint and Datgel parts, products, the services Datgel offers, uh, and some of the other products we sell, uh, and how you can take the next step in evaluating our solution. And at the end, we'll have some questions. Now, on the point of questions, um, there is a questions and answer, or Q&A, um, dialogue, which you should be able to click on somewhere in your interface, the Zoom, that would be the place we'll ask questions. Um, but I will uh, answer them at the end if, if you write them as we go. So the Datgel and Gint solution, it is a combination of uh, Gint and Datgel software. So Gint being the core product, Datgel, we have developed um, add-ins that work with Gint. So together, this will allow you in one system to uh, reduce boreholes, deal with lab testing and situ testing, modeling, instrumentation, mapping. So from one interface or one solution with you know, multiple interfaces, but it all comes back to the one database ultimately, you can deal with this. Um, and it is efficient, right? Because you won't, don't have to type the same data multiple times. You have one single source of truth for your information. And Gint and the, and the reports Datgel has created in Gint provide exceptional presentation. Because ultimately, your outcome for your work is the report that you create to give to your customer, mostly in PDF these days. So Gint is developed by Bentley Systems. Um, it is the core product. It provides the core data management, reporting, and CAD functionality. It's very flexible and customizable. Uh, it has some integration with the other range of Bentley software, particularly with Plaxus and uh, Soil Vision. Uh, and Gint, via Gint Civil Tools, it's also that, that functionality of Gint Civil Tools is also part of Bentley Civil Design products like Open Roads, Open Rail. Um, Gint has the option um, to, be, to use an Access or an SQL Server backend. We'll get more to that later. Um, but fundamentally, the goal of Gint is to help you centrally control your subsurface data in, in a database. Um, and it is a very popular product around the world in excess of 8,000 licenses are out there today. Datgel, um, we are your partner in using Gint. We'll help you, we'll support you if you uh, purchase the software from us and maintain your maintenance and support. We will uh, train your team. We run training courses uh, in-house and public. We, are, we have a number of people, three people involved in our company with geotechnical data or geotechnical experience. Um, we are a third party developer. So we develop add-ins to Gint that take Gint closer to that goal you have of doing all the processing in, in, in one system. Um, and, off, and part of what we've done is create localizations which are not otherwise available out of the box with Gint. So Datgel has in excess of 230 
organizations in over 30 countries using our add-ins. Australia being our biggest market, um, you know, down from there across the world. Um, we will, we can develop new functionality in our, in our add-ins on to, in, in your Gint library. Uh, we have uh, team members in three countries and um, in Europe and Asia Pacific. Uh, and we are a reseller of Gint and other Bentley products. So we can sell Gint to most users in, uh, well, in most countries around the world. Not all. So the solution, right? Gint is the core. Gint Pro, Pro Plus, Logs. Then the, um, the DGD tool, it, it encompasses Gint. It's like our core product, I guess. Then we have a number of Datgel add-ins, more geotechnical ones down the right, and more utility ones down the left. What's new a bit is we have this uh, Gint Collector Android app. It is it was released late last year, so it it can connect to normal Gint and to Gint Civil tools. So via like via a cloud interface, the iModel Cloud, I think the name is. Um, so we'll talk more about that in a minute. We have a couple of slides about that. So what you see in this area here is what you would install on your desktop or on your PC, laptop, desktop, server, whatever. Um, now again, civil tools may be something that many of you are not aware of. It's, it's the, uh, the second latest part of Gint. It, um, it is, provides 3D modeling and mapping tools. Basically it's MicroStation come, that comes with Gint Pro and Pro Plus. Now you would have a network between you, your, your, P, your PC and the databases often. Now, of course you can store the databases on your local C drive if you so want. So we have the library database for Gint and the library database even partly gets into Gint collector and the project database, which can be either access or an SQL server format. Um, so they, this connects to Gint Civil Tools, to Gint Pro Plus, and again, in an indirect way to Gint Collector. So a bit about the data flow, right? I'm gonna follow through this process of how, you know, like we get data in, we print it, we calculate it, we analyze it, right? So the first step is getting the data into the database. So traditionally, and still quite a lot of people will just sit at their desktop computer perhaps or laptop and type data directly into the Gint interface. That's the first option. Second option, uh, over the last five to 10 years, quite a few companies uh, in some, some countries have been collecting data into Gint logs on a, on a rugged tablet PC. So that's got a full, full Windows computer, but on a rugged tablet. Um, now we have the Gint Collector Android app it uh, will allow you to get field data into Gint uh, via that. Now, other people, other sort of situations where you have data files, be it from field data, like CPTs, you can import that using the Datgel CPT tool, or other formats from in situ tests would require, or lab tests. You know, probably you're not producing the data in a format Gint can instantly import, so you'd need to manipulate that data using code or manually to get it into a format you can import into Gint. So Gint, the Gint database becomes the central repository of all your field lab monitoring data. Now, logically at this point, we're gonna talk a bit more about the Gint collector, right? Cause it's um, the new main way we suggest you collect your field data. But I also think you could even use it for lab data if you wanted to, like, cause it's just, you know, it's an Android app concept. You could walk around your laboratory collecting data. But anyway, let's get to the details. So the Android app allows you to configure your administrator to configure forms that, is, that are specific to your library and project database. And then to allow that to be used by your field people on each project. So you're on the field, your project people will Okay, one step back. You can define your light, where your boreholes are going to be, the, the plan of your boreholes in Gint Civil Tools, and then publish that into the cloud, which is then available to um, the Android app. 
or on the spot, your people can just create boreholes, you know, where they're going to, where they're standing, right. Without having to pre plan them. So then you collect the data, uh, in the, in the, in the forms that you have designed, you click the sync button, uh, and it will sync it up to the cloud and you go to Gint and you can click a button and download the data to, uh, to your database in the office. So your project managers are in the office and the people who need to, you know, process the data in the office, like produce the factual reports, they can have near real time access to the data. Um, and you know, push out those borehole logs uh, the same day or the next day or whatever that you need for those those types of really fast turnaround contracts. So I've just listed a bunch of ideas I have here about how you could use it from boreholes and test pits, DCPs, field tests, instrumentation. Um, I really imagine that uh, using such an approach, you can get great um, productivity. And I think the great advantage of the GIN collector is it is intimately integrated into Gint and, inter and, in and immediately integrated into your library and project where many other options in the market, you know, they're a, they're, it's a bit of a square peg round hole problem where you have a lot of effort to make it all work. So here's a bit of a, a, a pictorial of what's, um, you know, what's going on, right? You lay out your boreholes and Gint civil tools, which will become a bit more obvious later what we're talking about. You, um, you do this configuration of the forms and this it's called the Gint administrator. Um, and that gets published in the cloud. And then in the field, your, the data is coming back and forth between the Android app and you can see the, the cycle there. So here's a few screenshots on the left, something a screenshot I took yesterday playing with the Gint administrator. So this is me designing the form for the uh, strata main table. Um, and on the right here is a screenshot that I found with, from Bentley's website, which shows, you know, the actual Android app in operation. You can use, um, you know, you can write or you can use type or whatever, use options of how you're going to enter the data. So moving on back to normal GINs. Um, but it does, you know, it is quite topical for the field data collection. You have two ways of storing material descriptions with GINT. You can have a paragraph like you see at the top um, where you, if you look carefully, you'll see some formatting, you know, like uh, poor formatting choices, some even spelling mistakes somewhere in there, if I remember correctly. Or the other option is to use the component description model, which is down the bottom where you have a different column for each part of the description. Um, and the advantages of the, the, the component description are you can control the, um, what people are entering for each parameter. Um, so, and you can validate things like the color field that uses the right words. If it's because it's not a drop down list, but many of the other fields are drop down lists. Um, and then when you print the report, the borehole lock, it will show the description in the right order and the right, you know, formatting and so on. Um, and you can selectively report particular parts of the description or filter on particular parts of the description very effectively because you know what's primary and what's secondary because there are different fields. So we have set up some examples for different um, logging standards um, in, uh, in, well, in the Dutch old DGD tool, but in normal GINT, these things exist too. So you also have to choose what type of database um, you need for your situation. So Gint has an option of using an access backend database and an SQL server backend database. So the sorts of projects or situations where you'd want to go to SQL server include uh, mega projects. For example, um, there are some really supersized construction projects going on, particularly reclamation projects where they're doing tens of thousands of CPTs over many years, right? Over five, 10 years and many lab tests. And they need to form a database of all that and import and export AGS format data to give to their, you know, their clients. So, you know, they need to use, if they want to have all that in one database. So it's obvious that Git access database can't handle that. SQL server is the way to go. Another, another reason you may want to jump to this is 
you, you know, you're, you're a normal site investigation or slash consulting company. You have, you know, thousand projects a year going on, let's say, and you would like to form a database of all your data you're collecting. You can import your historical data and then going forward, you can add the data to the live SQL server database. So that way you can reuse this information or you can, you can, you can look at projects near a new proposal you're writing to understand the geology you might encounter and better estimate the costs. Um, Again, Pro Plus also gives you the ability to um, deal with coordinate systems. So uh, as, as you think necessary. Um, and uh, using SQL Server, not just that it has a pretty much an unlimited amount of data storage, but you can also have multiple users working with the same database at the same time. So this is another really good one. Even if you might not have a mega, mega project, but you may want to have five people working with the same database at the same time. You cannot do that effectively with access. It will fall over the way GIMP operates. So that's a good reason to jump to SQL Server for bigger projects you're working on. So we've chosen our database and now we've entered our data. We did that about 10 slides back, right? And now as you enter the data, the data can be validated and calculated so that the actual results of whatever the thing is, is there sitting in your database for future use. So that could be like N values or RQDs or lab tests or, or DCP correlations or CPT correlations or instrumentation results. So as you type it, you click save, it calculates that stuff. Um, and then you can produce standard reports. Um, so if you're an SI company, your game is to be very efficient at producing your everyday reports after the field work. Um, and so Gint is exceptionally good at that, at that sausage factory processing. Um, you reuse the same project, the structure, the same library and reports over and over again on different projects. So here's an examples of different styles of reports. I would sort of class that way that you can reuse over and over again. Um, and then for some projects, whether you're on the more the consulting side of uh, things, uh, you need to analyze the data. So you might receive the results in AGS format and import them into Gint. And then you would like to analyze the, um, say the CPT data, play with the, the different um, factors of for correlations, compare results before and after compaction, or you may like to define a design line of a uh, certain region of the site for a different certain geological units. So you can see here we've filtered the data on the right there to only show the results of units starting with the letter F. Um, moving on. Then, for many people, actually after borehole logs, it's fence diagrams or cross sections are your major, major want before graphs, even though I just sort of spoke about graphs just now. So, uh, Gint can make 2D fence diagrams in the normal GIMP, uh, just like the one you see here. So now what, what I have done here is um, I did draw these lines uh, and I added the fill alluvium rock, right? And I did draw this tunnel, but um, everything else is, you know, manually or sorry, automatically created when I, you know, printed the report or exported the report to uh, a CAD file. So Gint has an inbuilt CAD file that, or CAD editor that allows you to edit these simple things quite easily. Um, but you can um, automatically present surfaces. So in the first uh, iteration of all of that, you could only import them. So you could import them from, uh, from uh, grid file formats like Surfer, Golden Software Surfer, or Land XML tin files. And then you can display those on the section. Like, uh, like so. Now this, that blue line has a big jump in it. That's because there are other boreholes um, nearby that are affecting the surface, but they're not presented on the, on the section. Um, now, many of you, the bigger projects will be um, will linear projects like roads, tunnels, railways, and so on. Um, so we can store the alignments of the, uh, those, those uh, structures in, in the database, many, many alignments. And then you can choose to display those 
uh, or you can choose to use this as the baseline uh, for, a, for a section. Just note, we've got the Z1 and Z2 columns here. Um, and then on the next line, you'll see that the, we've used the base, the, 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 the uh, alignment as the baseline for this section. And you can choose to display the, uh, the Z1 and Z2 lines on the section as well. So that could be the, especially the proposed grade or the center line of the road versus the, the, the existing ground level at that point. But you can, you wouldn't necessarily need to show the existing ground level because you can use the surface to show that on the same fence. Uh, we can also present uh, geophysics data behind, um, behind cross sections, behind fences. Uh, and this functionality is called fence drapes. So basically you tell GIMP where this geophysics line is in 3D space. You import the drawing or the image, choose to show it when you print, print your fence and it will uh, automatically display it in the right location um, relative to the fence baseline, skew it as necessary. Right, um, GINT civil tools, right? So we've spoken about normal GINT so far, the core GINT product. We spoke about GINT collector, the Android app. And now the other main part of the GINT, say family, I guess, uh, is uh, GINT civil tools. So this is basically MicroStation. Uh, it's rebranded with a different name called GINT civil tools, but it is the MicroStation engine. It's the vast majority of the MicroStation product is now provided to users of GIMP Professional and GIMP Professional Plus. Um, so this provides you with 2D and 3D CAD functionality, some basic GIS tools, like let's call it more mapping tools, some aspects of civil design tools, um, but not, not really civil design, more like sort of modeling. Um, so the goal of this product is to give the tools that ground engineering people need. So sorts of things you might want to do is the desk study or preliminary investigation phase where you want to look to connect to GIS data like web mapping services, Bing maps, shape files, look at where your boreholes are on, um, you know, for previous projects and then lay out your borehole plan. So that's the, um, the first use. And okay. And as I said before, you can sync those layered out borehole plan, into um, GIMP Collector. So we have a video of, uh, of that sort of thing. So you can connect to Bing Maps, um, you can uh, bring in your existing boreholes and stuff, a bit repetitive what I said a minute ago, just let the video run. All right, you, can, you can open DGN and DWG and DXF files. And the other cool thing with this one is you can bring in DWG files uh, and then you can convert them to DGN and DXF and various versions of DXF. So you can then convert it to the DXF version that GINT can handle, normal GINT, and import them into GINT. Or you can bring in a shape file and convert that to a DXF file and bring it into GINT. So it does sort of solve those problems. Uh, and it can do contouring as well. So here's an example of that. Um, of so contour as a surface that you've generated and you can print and PDF, uh, you know, maps out of here. So then you've gone off and done your drilling project. You've, you know, maybe used GIN collector to collect the data and you've come back to the office or, you know, you've synced the data back to the office and the people in the office can then instantaneously create a 3d model because you can set up templates of how you want to present your boreholes in 3d and 2D. So you just open up that stuff and sync, you know, connect to the GIMP database and then you have it. So you can visualize the data in 3D, you can bring in surfaces and the 3D CAD files from, um, uh, you know, that provided by the designers. Uh, and then you can export the data to 3D PDF, which is something that can form part of your site investigation report or factual report or to give to your clients. So you're adding value to your reportable um, your report to, uh, to your client. You can also export land XML of um, surfaces out of this. And this is our solution for BIM, geo BIM data. We can export an I model file of pretty much what you see there of the boreholes and surfaces if you want to. 
So here's a, just now we've got a couple of slides really showing the details of what you can present in 3D. So you can produce, so this slide, I, I made this example. Um, you can do, make, present 3D inclined boreholes. You can have different colors for different geological units, but the, you can still do the sub layers anyway, the descriptions. You have disks representing the a result. You can have spheres representing a result as well. So the diameter could be bigger and smaller depending on the results. You can have this on the, on the, the, the disks next near the ground surface actually represent the drilling fluid level during drilling. And on the right, it's a different presentation of the same data where I've created a 3D bar chart of RQD. You can show um, major defects as well, like, uh, you know, faults or whatever. You can choose what you want to see. Uh, and here's a few examples of other things, like you make 2D and 3D fence diagrams. You can do the surf surface modeling. You can edit the surfaces. Um, you do volumes of the solid models uh, and you can show text down the side of the, of the, of a stick uh, and you can link to a PDF, like a hyperlink. Um, okay. Now back to more normal GINTs. Um, GINTs can connect with many other products. Uh, so we've got an add in to arc map um, exports, mostly exports otherwise to, Rockworks and Surfer, import export from Surfer, BIM data through GINS Civil Tools. Very importantly, AGS format. Um, so AGS 3 and 4, 3.1, AGS RTA as well. Um, Excel, CSV has a built in PDF exporter, which where you can control the bookmarks uh, and any of the CAD file, any, any reports in GINT can be exported to DXF and DGN and raster files. So there are three or four, four now, uh, products that come with, uh, you know, in the GINT family that you actually purchase, right? GINT Collector, as we described already, um, it's the Android app. GINT Logs, GINT Logs Pro and Pro Plus are the same installation on your, on your computer, uh, but they have different functionality available. So GINT Logs only works with an access format database. It has, limited import export options and in the output it only has the logs tab so you can only print a log and design a log um, in GIN professional it has all the report styles so fences uh, particularly um, and uh, it supports AGS format import and export and it includes GIN civil tools so for many of our customers, uh, they might buy a bunch of GIN logs and one or two GIN professionals it's a combination. You can buy combinations like that to you know, optimize what you're really going to use. If you're an SI type company, you're going to be doing a lot of logging. So GIN logs is really all you need for logging. Uh, and GIN Professional Plus is the highest product. It's the one that supports SQL Server, multi-users, coordinate systems. It has all the functionality of GIN Professional Plus these other things. And it includes GIN Civil Tools Professional Plus, which Again, Civil Tools Professional Plus can connect to an SQL server database. So you can plot, that's the one where you could plot every borehole in your SQL server database. So every borehole in your whole country you ever drilled could be in one 3D model if you wanted to spend the time for that. All right, so we finished talking about GINT. Um, now I'm gonna talk specifically about the Datchel add-ins to GINT. So, um, Many of the examples I've shown you so far actually are created by the Datchel add-ins. So first one and our core product is the Datchel DGD tool. So the majority of people who buy GINT from Datchel also buy this, this product. It, it becomes your interface to GINT, right? It's, it's, a, it's a database, it's a library of hundreds of reports. Um, it's a, uh, it has correspondence files to support many AGS format derivatives, as you can see there, uh, including the well, a draft of the Australian AGS4 format uh, and quite complicated one by Orsted, which is an offshore uh, so, um, energy company. They have their own AGS format. We support that. Um, it has different logging standards for different countries. 
So you can have one library that is shared between many countries using this with this DGD tool. It uh, allows you to choose which logging standard you're going to use for a particular project. Um, and it has a program behind it that calculates and validates data relevant to borehole logs and analyzing of borehole lab and in situ data. I don't mean calculating lab data. I meant more like you want to summarize the data. It's about summarizing that sort of information primarily. Um, it has tools to import and export data that are not otherwise in GINT. Uh, and it has ability to like analyze or pro like um, yeah, query surfaces and so on. It's, it's got a whole range of little tools. And there are two product levels. There's Gint, the logs edition, which is designed for people who are using Gint logs and has the relevant functionality uh, and the professional edition that has everything. Okay, the CPT tool. This is our first add-in and probably yeah, commercially our best, our biggest one. Um, this tool allows you to mass process many CPTs in a database, right? That's where it's different from many of the alternatives on the market. So you can import scores or even hundreds of data files at once, process them, calculate them all together with one set of configuration or, or various configurations by point ID. Print reports, very high quality reports. And then if you need to, you can export your data to AGS format or GEF format. Um, and do that on mass. We've uh, recently developed that option to do it on mass uh, for G for GEF. Uh, it has correlations for soil behavior and soil behavior types and calculations with dissipation tests and liquefaction. And there's tools to help you um, do requirement and specification checks like on a, on a ground improvement project. So this has really come out of a lot of this came out of ground improvement projects and the mass use of CPTs on those projects. The output tool. Um, now, if you've never used GINT, it can be a little bit hard to understand why you need this. Um, but for most people in a given site investigation report or a, or a, or a uh, design report, you want to produce many different types of reports. Uh, and GINT is good at printing one type of report at a time or one, one report at a time to PDF or print. Um, but when you want to do this combination of things or a great long list of different reports at once, you have to use a script, a script being a text file. Um, and it can be a bit hard to manage that when it gets beyond a few hundred lines. Or it may be basically impossible to create things where you want to collate many reports by point ID, by borehole like the non-cord and the cord log for 100 boreholes. You can't just do that in normal GINT. You'd have to print them separately and then collate them manually in Acrobat or whatever PDF editor you use. So this really automates those processes and can save you an enormous amount of time very quickly on, on projects for, for reporting. The fencer map tool uh, is an ad, uh, it's not an add-in. It's a series of reports only there's no program and it allow it works with the dgd tool database and allows you to choose what data you want to present on each fence you print um and uh so at output time and you can have it can, it can work together with the cpt tool fence reports to uh to produce the cpt data in detail as well and you can decide if you're going to offset things. So you can see here these data is offset, so it doesn't quite overlap, although it's the, I know the image is a bit small. So that's controllable in the process. Uh, the photo tool allows you to um, efficiently process and present uh, photographs from site investigation work, like core photos, test bit photos, sample photos. Basically, your manual task is to put the photos in a, in a folder on your file system relative to your Gint project database um, and uh, in the, with a particular name, right? Uh, we have a naming convention, which is pretty logical and easy to use. You probably do something like that anyway. You then click a button again, it reads the file names and 
allows you to then print the reports very efficiently where it automatically sizes the photos and puts them on the page in the right place. Uh, and you can have these different options of one per page, two per page, four per page. It's, you know, we have different things. Uh, and you can have the same look and feel as your borehole logs. So you get a better outcome and a more efficient outcome. The monitoring tool um, processes, calculates and presents instrumentation data. So it's not a web-based real-time type system. It's, it's your alternative to using Excel to manage monitoring data. Now, if you've ever managed monitoring data in Excel, which I have years ago, uh, it's okay when you start with, when you've got a small number of records, but uh, when, when it gets, you know, 10 to thousands and thousands of records and calculations, it can, well, certainly back then, it was um, very problematic. Um, so this allows you to do it in a database together with your borehole data, where you could also present the geology data with your, with your monitoring data, as you can see some examples there. And this comes with installation reports and the graphs and the calculations and everything necessary for these instruments. And we have developed a whole new range of, well, you know, all of the vibrating wire formulas that you might come across with piece of it. It's, that's something we did recently. And we also recently made it all work with, make it unit flexible. You can decide what you're gonna use. The advanced in situ tool is um, pack a test at this point. So it's being used quite a lot on some big tunnels in Sydney and Melbourne by some major consultants. So the benefit is you're processing your data just like your borehole logs in Gint. Uh, and then you can print a report just like you do if your borehole log out and, it, and, and you can choose how the analysis will take place. There's a few sort of approaches or to, you know, ways of calculating it, but it's still the one method from Holsby. Um, and you can instantly print the results of this on your borehole log as well without having to retype and re-import it and so on. So it's, if you have a lot of packet tests, this is a very, very efficient approach to take and tested and proven by, like I said, a couple of consultants. Um, um, lab and in situ tool, this, this is an add-in uh, that Datchel created for labs to calculate and present um, lab data. Uh, so you can see a few examples. Most recently, just this year, we've oh, left a little arrow there. Uh, we've been um, working on the consolidation test, just about to release that. Um, and we had well, most other tests uh, have previously been done. So, Actually, the only test we really haven't done yet is triaxial. That, that is on the cards this year. So PSD, all the classification tests, compaction related tests, chemical tests, direct shear, UCS, point load, you know, the, most of the common ones you'll come across. Some examples. Okay, the last product is the Datchel Security Tool Enterprise. This is one of our newest products. We haven't um, pushed it too hard. Um, so this is applicable to those using an SQL server database. So you, you might imagine if you put your, you know, 10,000 historical projects into SQL server, you probably don't want to let, and, and you start adding more data um, to the, um, to the database uh, for new projects, you don't want to let the people making the new data edit the historical data. But Gint out of the box doesn't have any tools to control what projects and which boreholes each person, each individual is allowed to edit. Either they have edit rights to the whole database or they've got just a few rights or no rights, right? It's just, it's very blanket like that. So the security tool enterprise implements intelligent business rules that you need to manage who can edit what in the database. And it uses your active directory user account. So, um, so Datgel, we, uh, we sell Gint. We develop these add-ins to Gint to take it closer to where you want to go. And we can offer professional services to customize and further develop things to do exactly what you want and to run training courses to uh, suit your requirements. So here's, here's a bit of a list of, you know, some of the things we've done over the years. I, I tend to think some of the greatest value we've offered, we've given to people is the importing of data, right, efficiently. So you can just click a button, import it, because you've got this 
data that you keep on receiving. You don't want to be, you know, manually editing that over and over again. And we've done that a lot with uh, different things. Um, and we can training courses. We can produce, we can run in-house training courses for you, or we can attend our public training courses. And we are running one in May um, online uh, in this time zone, which we will start to advertise later today. Datchel also uh, can resell basically any of Bentley Systems products, but we're not obviously not trying to do everything. Uh, we're trying to focus in on the geotechnical products. So we can offer you Plaxus these days, as part of Bentley Systems range, Soil Vision, which um, is uh, you may not not everyone may have heard of it, but it's a very good um, slope stability calculation software. It's got 2D and 3D options. Uh, also has tools to create 3D models. So it's a sort of, it's, um, yeah, it's a bit like in civil tools, but, um, but in some respects even better. Um, and we also resell golden software products as well. So coming to the end here, um, what's your next step? Well, if you need the installer for Gint, if you don't have Gint already, uh, you need to email me to ask for that because um, we don't have it on our website. The, the Datchel trial or product trials are on our website uh, on the download trial page. Um, now, if you're going to give one of our add-ins a crack, um, I really recommend you read the quick start guide for each product. We made a bit of effort to create those recently um, and it, it really does help you along that starting point. We also have instructions about how to activate the trial for Gint and so on. We are running an online training 11 to 15 May, which as I said a minute ago, we'll advertise that later. And we are, will be running a bunch of webinars over this quarter on the various products. I think I'll start with the advanced in situ tool in about two weeks time after Easter uh, and the rest following that. Um, Okay, so uh, we have um, some questions. Here's my contact details if you need to ask me anything later. Uh, but we do have a couple of questions um, in the uh, Q&A and the chat. I'll just start with the chat one. Uh, if anyone wants to jump in there with some other questions now, I'll get to them in a second and the Q&A is best. Uh, I was asked, uh, we, do we have, um, by Andrew, do we have any um, comprehensive example project data for testing and education? Uh, well, yes, the, well, I mean, to some degree. Okay, uh, when you download the trial of our add-ins, the DGD tool or the CPT tool, there is an example project in there which has example data which we use for our development and testing. So, and there is some of it is, you know, reasonably realistic. Uh, you know, that's how we created our, you know, example, example PDFs and so on, which you'll find in our, in the download as well. So yes, like that's, that's that one. Um, I have a, a question earlier on, um, what other software, uh, that can, can share the data? Um, I guess they're asking what other software can we share the data? Well, I think my, my, my slide back here. Probably um, he had this might have been a question might have been asked before we got to this one So I guess that probably answers that question. It's a pretty comprehensive list uh, uh, When song asked uh, how can the 3d ground model generated in civil tools be imported into into GIS or arc pro um, uh, Well, you can export a land XML file. Uh, I think you can export a DXF file of the surface. That's probably something I need to look into uh, to give it like a really definitive answer of that for that one. Um, it's sort of, I guess I'm, I don't have ArcGIS available to me, so I'm not 100% sure what, uh, what, um, you know, what it takes these days. Um, can we send calendar invites out? emails for future webinars uh i thought perhaps <laughs> uh, we can try to do that um all right now liang liang pin asked um how do you manage the number of nodes exporting for plaxis 2d analysis because the number of nodes will slow down the processing time 
Are you mean exporter out of Gint, like for the um, for the G for the borehole data? I guess that's the context of this. Um, uh, I don't think you can like the the Plaxus export out of Gint. You don't have very much control. Um, basically, it's um, yeah. Okay, you said yes. Um, it's yeah. Well, there is no control. So it just, uh, I think you control which boreholes, if I remember correctly, perhaps, but you can't control much more than that. And you've got to have all the layers. So it doesn't have, so it has continuous layers across the whole, every borehole has the layer, something to that effect. Uh, I think there's not a lot of options to control. Again, I probably need to test that to give a better answer. Um, I might get back to you on that one here. Uh, I had a question um, just stating interpretive report. Um, do you want to be a bit more specific on what? Um, uh, well, I mean, still interpretive report is uh, still pretty a general concept. Uh, well, the I think it, from my perspective, interpretive reporting might involve creating cross sections, uh, forming the geological model of the site. So yes, that um, Gint can be assisting can assist with that. But I also think interpretive reporting might involve like um, bearing capacity recommendations and foundation recommendations. Um, we're not really, I mean, yes, you can use our tools, our, our reports to help you form the model and understand the data. But then I think uh, a lot of the interpretive reporting is words you need to uh, figure out for yourselves. Um, the CPT tool does have a correlation of bearing capacity um, from CPTs clearly. But uh, and the DCP, to, um, which is part of this part of the DGD tool, sorry, some of the acronyms. Uh, so it also has a correlation, if you want to believe it, you know, to be honest, uh, for DCPs. Um, all right, we've got a question that I somehow missed before about how does your system deal with cyclic test data? Um, well, it depends which type of cyclic test you mean, um, but uh, probably not amazingly well. Uh, we're not trying to calculate any cyclic tests in our, in our lab testing code at this point. Uh, I feel that's another level. Um, but there are, um, I think we do have some, some of the tables in the system have to, to support the Orsted AGS4 plus, so it must be supporting some cyclic tests, but I'd have to look at the exact details. Um, all right, uh, also, okay, ask, put the same question twice, that's cool. Uh, and Amol asked uh, how to customize the CPT SPT post processing. Can you customize the correlations that are plotted from the raw data? Uh, well, there's no um, correlations from SPTs currently calculated anyway. So this question I can answer in relation to CPTs. Um, and uh, yes, you can um, you can calculate correlations. Here we go. This not there. Let me back here somewhere. I should have done it the other way. So this um, here is the uh, correlations for the CPT, uh, one of them for relative density. That's the formula here. It's a bit hit. I mean, it's not the entire formula. So you can control what correlations are used and you can turn, just hide and show these correlations uh, if, you know, if you don't like particular ones. Um, so, and you can make more in the CPT tool. All right, we've got a question about um, export to BIM, IFC format. Well, I have heard of IFC, but I'm not very familiar with it. Um, uh, the BIM exports are done by the MicroStation um, engine. Uh, so whatever MicroStation can do, I think the Gint Civil Tools can do it. And it's currently, from what I've observed it's exporting i model files um but i'm not saying it doesn't do ifc i would have to look into the exact requirements of that so it's not my area of uh, immense expertise to be honest 
Um, uh, can you write uh, descriptions in Greek? Yes, you can write descriptions in Mongolian and in uh, Chinese. Uh, and yes, you can do it in Greek. So basically the trick is for these more complicated languages, you've got to use, um, got to set your um, system locale to the, um, to the language you want to print in. It also has its potential problems, but anyway, that's the general gist. Yes, you can do it. Uh, can we uh, calculate soil behavior type index from CPTs? Yes, you can. Yep. The multiple IC methods are included. ISBT and all these, yeah, there's a whole bunch of them. Uh, there are multiple methods getting calculated, like four or five. Um, and you can, you know, again, show or hide them if you don't like them. Um, and uh, I guess that pretty much answers your question. I think you've got to give it a go. And uh, Okay, well, I guess that we can wrap it up then. Um, look, thanks everyone for attending. I uh, hope uh, everyone's, uh, everyone's well. And uh, I look forward to seeing you at our um, next webinar. Have a great day.